Welcome to Mission Independent Baptist Church. Happy New Year. Uh, we're in the new year, 2024. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, everybody, a few people were sick. They're healthy now. Praise God for healing. You know, we give God the glory. You know, God does. God has his hand in everything. He, he helps his people. If we're sick, he heals us. Amen. Amen. You know, we have to praise him and give him honor and glory all the time. Amen. We're going to sing page 165, My Savior First of All. When my life work is ended and I cross the swelling tide, when the bright and glorious morning I shall see, I shall know my Redeemer when I reach the other side, and His smile will be the first to welcome me. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, and redeemed by His side I shall stand. I shall know him, I shall know him, by the print of the nails in his hand. Oh, the soul-thrilling rapture when I view his blessed face, and the luster of his kindly beaming eye. How my full heart will praise him for his mercy, love, and grace, that prepare for me a mansion in the sky. I shall know him, I shall know him, and redeemed by his side I shall stand. I shall know him, I shall know him, by the print of the nails in his hand. Oh, the dear ones in glory, how they beckon me to come, and our parting at the river I recall. To the sweet bells of Eden, they will sing my welcome home. But I long to meet my Savior first of all. I shall know Him, I shall know Him. And redeemed by His side, I shall stand. I shall know Him, I shall know Him. By the print of the nails in His hand. Through the gates to the city in a robe of spotless white, he will lead me where no tears will ever fall. In the glad song of ages I shall mingle with delight, but I long to meet my Savior first of all. I shall know him, I shall know him, and redeemed by his side I shall stand. I shall know him, I shall know him, by the print of the nails in his hand. You know what? we got to keep serving God. One day we'll be with him. We'll be redeemed. Amen. We'll be in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ forever. Tonight I'm going to teach in Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. And I titled this... There's power in his name, Jesus. Power in his name, Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to speak your words and not mine, Lord. I pray that you teach us what you want to teach us, Lord. I pray for souls to be saved. I pray for people who are saved to, to, to content, continue to work for you and train. Tell people about you. Get out there and stay busy till you come, Lord. Shine. We need to shine for you, Lord. I pray that you'd help us shine and Show, shine your light through the darkness of this world right now, Lord. I pray for your will in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. All right. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that enter into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask in alms. And Peter, fasting his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. 
And he, leaping off, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame, lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. When Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel you at ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our power or holiness we have made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son, Jesus, whom ye have delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One, the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Peace, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Okay, so we're going to talk about this. You know, Peter and John were apostles of Jesus Christ. They were out telling people about Jesus Christ, how to get saved. And they weren't going to be denied. We should be the same way. We can't be denied. Nobody. So you can't talk about it. No, yes, I can talk about it. It's a free country. Amen? Amen. It says, as long as I, I still think it's a free country. We can talk whatever we want about the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to tell people how he died shed his blood on the cross of Calvary, and God raised him from the dead the third day, and he's alive, sitting on the right hand of God the Father, willing to save people if they come to him and repent of their sins, and through faith, and grace through, through his grace, through the faith in Jesus Christ, by what he did, trust him as Lord and Savior. It says, now, Peter and John, in verse 1 of chapter 3 of Acts, says, now Peter and John went up together into the temple, so they went into the temple together at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. You know, the ninth hour has significance. Uh, you know, they prayed, the Jewish people prayed three times a day. The patriarch Abraham, he established uh, the morning prayer. Let's look at the Genesis, Genesis 19, 27. Genesis 19, 27. Genesis 19.27. And it says, Abraham got, so he got up. Got means got. And got, they say, is not a word, but got, yeah, so it's in the Bible. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. So he stood, you know. Stood means standing, means he prayed. So he prayed before the Lord in the morning. So, you know, this is after... Uh, you know, he left uh, uh, that the Lord reigned Sodom and Gomorrah with brimstone and fire, and not Solomon got his wife looked back. You know what? His wife, Lot. Lot's wife, loved the world, and you know what? She became a pillar of salt. And Abraham got up in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. So he stood and he prayed to God. He said God would bless him. And you know what? He, he had, God had found favor with Abraham, and he prayed. And then Isaac introduced a midday prayer. And got his grandson Jacob the evening prayer. So they prayed three different times. Uh, the Jews before Jesus came, but they prayed like three times a day. And let's look at uh, Psalm fifty-five seventeen. Psalm fifty-five seventeen. You know these guys, Peter and John, went into the temple to pray. You know it's good to pray. It's good to pray as many times as you can a day. It doesn't matter. Three times. Pray as much as you need to pray to God daily. Anytime you have a concern or you have a, an issue, pray to God. Ask him to help you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Psalm 55, 17. It says, Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. So this is David. He says, For me I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. You know what? You call upon Jesus. Ask him to save your soul. Ask him to forgive your sins. He'll save your soul. Amen. He saved me. He saved you. He can save anyone who comes to him and asks him to save him. And, uh, Daniel 6.10. Daniel. You know what? You talk to the Lord in prayer daily. 
morning, afternoon, evening, all throughout the day. Ask God to help you. Amen. Amen. Give him his praise. Give him his glory. He deserves it, man. He helps us so much daily. Amen. All right. I'm looking for Daniel six times. Daniel. Okay, hold on. Daniel 6.10 says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks for before thanks before his God as he did a four time. Mm -hmm. They just made the, a rule that you couldn't pray, so he opened the windows and he prayed anyway. You know what? we we got to be loud. we got to lift up the name of Jesus. We can't be silenced. You know what? There's power in his name. His name is all powerful. Amen? So we need to lift him up. Here, Daniel, you know, they made a decree that you couldn't pray, and you know what? He prayed to the God of Israel. He prayed to, to Jesus. Amen? Amen? Let's look at Back in our text, in the verse, it says, Now Peter and John went up together in the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. So, you know, the third hour in the Jewish, uh, their time, they start at 6 p.m. or Yeah, 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. That's how their clock goes. So the third hour is roughly 9 a.m. The sixth hour is roughly 12 p.m. And the ninth hour is roughly 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And, you know, Exodus 29, let's look at Exodus 29, Genesis, Exodus 29, 38 and 39, Exodus 29, 38 and 39. It says, now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar, two lambs of the first year, day by day, continually, the one lamb thou shalt offer in the morning, and the other lamb thou shalt offer at even, even, so evening at night. So they offered to God. They gave blood. They sacrificed to God in the morning and night. And you know what? Uh, there was a picture of Jesus Christ to come, his blood for the remission of sins, because without the remission of blood, there's, there's no forgiveness of sins. And it was a picture of Jesus to come. And let's look at Numbers 28, 2 through 8. Numbers 28, 2 through 8. This is significant. All these uh, praying, the different times and the different, uh, the why the prayer was used. Uh, Numbers 28, 2 through 8. You know, God told here, it said, The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, and let's go from verse 1 of chapter 28, Numbers, Command the children of Israel and say unto them, My offering, my bread, for my sacrifice is made by fire for a sweet savor unto me. Shall you observe to offer unto me in their due season? And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire, which ye shall offer unto the Lord, two lambs of the first year, without spot, day by day, for a continued burnt offering. So they were supposed to offer a continual burnt offering, so uh, lamb without spot, so like the firstborn who were like perfect, and that's a picture of Jesus to come because Jesus was perfect too. The one lamb shall thou offer in the morning, and the other lamb shall thou offer at evening. So it's morning and in the evening, and a tenth part of the ephus of the flour of meat offering mingled with the fourth part of a hen of beaten oil. It is a continual burnt offering, which was ordained Mount Sinai, for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. So it's a sweet savor. God, you know, it's the blood. You know, the offering, that was a sweet savor to God. In the drink offering, there shall be the fourth part of the hymn for one lamb. In the holy place shalt thou cause the strong wine to be poured unto the Lord for a drink offering. And the other lamb shalt thou offer at evening as the meat offering of the morning. As they drink thereof offering, thereof thou shalt offer it a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot and two tent deals of flour for meat offering mingled with oil in the drink offering them. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath besides the continual burnt offering. And so this is what the children of Israel did. That's how they prayed to God. They offered up these, uh, these lambs in the blood to continue. But it was a picture of Jesus to come. Let's go back to our text now. 
And you know what? Significant. They said not he went up to together in the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. You know, Jesus was crucified the third hour. Let's look at Mark 15, 25. Mark 15, 25. Mark 15, 25. And it says, it was the third hour, and they crucified him. So they crucified Jesus the third hour, which is roughly 9 a.m. in the morning. And then, in uh, the darkness covered the land, let's look at Mark. Uh, let's look at Mark 15, 13. No, hold on. Mark, Mark 15, 33. And then it says, when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And then Jesus gave up the ghost, and that is the ninth hour. Mark 15, 34 to 37. And it says, at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabbatani, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he called us Elias. And one ran and filled a sponge of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him the drink, let alone let us see whether Elias will come take him down. And Jesus cried with the loud voice and he gave up the ghost. So he gave up the ghost in the ninth hour there. And back in Peter. So they went into the tower to pray, pray on the ninth hour. And it says in verse 2 of uh, Acts 3, it says, And a certain man lame. So this man was paralyzed. He couldn't move his arms, his legs from his mother's womb. So he was born lame. He couldn't, he just couldn't move. And they carried, so it was carried. So they carried him. They had to carry him. He couldn't do nothing on his own, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple. So they picked him up and carried this man who was lame, and they laid him at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. You know what? It's beautiful when Jesus, God's people come and talk to you about the Lord Jesus Christ and tell you, tell them what he can do for you. You know, he, they laid him there so he can ask for alms, so he could ask, he would ask for money. He would beg. He would beg for money, food, you know, alms, goods, you know, charity to the poor of them that entered into the temple. So when the people went into the temple to worship God, this man who was lame, he couldn't do anything. He just laid there. And he, he asked people for, you know, if they could help him, give him something. And then who, seeing Peter, you know, this guy was, he was born lame. He couldn't walk, crawl, move his arms and legs. They would lay him at the gate. It was called beautiful. You know, the people of God are beautiful people, people who trust in Jesus Christ and help other people in the name of Jesus. They're beautiful. This man was helpless. He needed people to move him, but God had a plan. God has a plan for us all if we will listen and follow him. We have to follow his word. We have to follow his holy word here and see what his plan. We have to let the Holy Spirit guide us. And it says, who's seeing Peter and John? So we saw Peter and John come in about to go into the temple and they asked for alms. So they, he asked, the layman asked Peter and John, can you help me with something? Can you give me something? And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, you know, this man asked God's people for alms. You know, he begged. The only thing he could do, this is the only thing this man could do. He couldn't move. He just laid there. And then Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. So they looked at the layman laying there, and they said, look on us. Look at us. Look at us. You know, Peter looked in his eyes on this man. God directs our paths. And you know what? When we need to tell somebody about Jesus, we got to stop and tell them. Right. We have to, what God wants us to do. You know, they they looked upon him and, they, you know, where, he, where we're needed, we can help others. Amen. We can tell them about Jesus Christ. They, they looked upon him. They fastened their eyes on this man who he had no, he had no hope. He couldn't do anything. But he looked at them. And it says, then the man... In verse 5, and he gave heed. So he paid close attention to what they were saying. He's like, you know, what, what are they you know, going to do? Give me here. And, and unto them expecting to re receive something of them. So, you know, this man, he, he, he paid close attention to the man of God. He was going to see, thought he was going to give them money or some food or something, but he paid close attention. Then it says, then Peter said, 
silver and gold have I none. So he says, I have no silver, I have no gold, I have nothing to give you. But then he gave him the most wonderful thing, but such as I have given I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So the power of God, he said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. You know what? There's power in that name. You know, all power is in the name of Jesus. Jesus is all power. And it says he took them. Let's look at Let's look at Hebrews 1-2. Let's look at Hebrews 1-2. Let's look at a couple verses. There's power in Jesus' name. Hebrews 1-2. You know, God's given, in the last days, given power to the Son. Jesus has all power. It says, in Hebrews 1, 2, it says, Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. So God speaks to us through his holy word, through Jesus, through the word, through his holy Bible, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. He's the heir, you know, he's, uh, he's the inheritor of all things by whom also he made the world, you know. It says in the beginning he created the heaven and the earth. And it said in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He created everything. Without Him, nothing was created. Amen? Right. You know, so, you know, God is all powerful, and Jesus Christ is all power, and all the power, power of heaven and earth is all power in the name of Jesus. Let's look at Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. You know, it's told this man, in the name of Jesus Christ, you rise up and walk. So they were talking some power. There's power in the name of Jesus. Let's look at Matthew 28, 18 through 20. It says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. So Jesus has all power in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching to observe all things whatsoever commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So Jesus is with us till the end of the world, till he comes back. He's with us now, amen? amen. He's in this. He's right here, right now with us, amen? Let's look at Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says, Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him. So he lifted up, he's high, he's high, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to, glo to the glory of God the Father. So you know what? There's power in the name of Jesus. God's given him all power, all judgment, and he's going to judge us one day. And he's going to judge, you know, the people who trusted Jesus Christ, when he comes back, they're going to go with him, meet him in the air, and be with him forever. But the people who don't trust him are going to be separated from God. we got to get busy and tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ because, you know what, time's running short. Let's look back in our text in Acts 3, 7. So this man they told him, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, at the end of verse 6, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. You know what? God's power is in his right hand. Right now, Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father in heaven. And immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. So right when he touched him, I mean, his ankles, everything went back together like a normal person, like a strong person. And you know what? They, 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 they mended. His ankles mended. His muscles mended. Everything went together. And it says he received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked. So this man leaped up. He jumped up. He stood and he walked and entered with them in the temple, walking and leaping. So he's jumping up. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This man couldn't move. He was born that way. Think about that. I don't know how old he was. He might have been a young man, 20 years old. I don't know. Who knows? But you know what? He was walking and praising and leaping and praising God. You know, God's power... Jesus on the right hand of God in heaven right now. Let's look at 1 Peter 3.22. 1 Peter 3.22. 1 Peter 3.22. You know, there's power in the name of Jesus. Lift up his name wherever you go. 1 Peter 
It says, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. So no, angels, authority, power, everything subject unto God. Jesus Christ is all-powerful. Uh, you know, the angels and authorities, the powers are subject unto Jesus. Let's look at Luke 22.69. Luke 22.69. Luke 22, 69 says, Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. So in that right hand, the power, he's on the right hand. He's got all power. He's waiting for the Father to tell him to come back and judge. You know, he's exalted in heaven. Let's go back by our text and go to Acts 5.31. One page over from where we're at, Acts 5.31. It says, And when they had prayed, the place... No. Acts 5.31 says, Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior for, to forgive repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So you know what? God made Jesus a way for every by single person in this world to come back to God the Father to forgive our sins by dying on the cross of Calvary. He paid for us. Any, everybody can come back to him. You know, you just have to come. You have to come, and you got to repent. You got to turn to Him. He did. He did everything. We can't do nothing. We have to come to God. This man, they said in the name of Jesus, they gave him the right hand. They lifted him up in uh, Acts chapter three, and verse eight. He leaping up, stood and walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. You know, the power of God. The man leapt, up, leaped up, a miracle. He walked into the temple. Leaping and praising God, we should be like this man always. We should always, everything in our lives, everyday thing daily, we should give and praise to God, you know. Hey, I got a job. Thank you, Jesus. I'm healthy. I can walk. I can talk, you know. There's so many people, you know, limited, but God used this man to show his glory with through through his disciples here, through the through Peter and John. And let's look at verse number nine. And it says, All the people saw him walking and praising God. So, you know, these people when they come to the temple. This man, his whole life, since he was born, they laid him at the temple. You know, I mean, at the, there he was, you know, begging people for money and things. And it says in verse 10, And they knew that this was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate. You know, it's beautiful when God God sends his people and God saves you and God heals you. Amen? It says that it's at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. So they were amazed. They were like, you know, wow, this is amazing. This man sat here all these years and, you know, begged money. Here's he's jumping, he's leaping, he's praising God. You know, the, uh, people saw him. People, you know, people you see, you know, wh wh what do you see? You know, what do, what, do, what do you see when you see people? We got to, people see us. We got to be lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ. What do they see? What do they see when they see you? You know, you have to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. You got to glorify him. You got to shine. You know what? These men, these people saw this man jump up because he was paralyzed and he's glorifying God. And Peter and John, they said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he got up and he walked. You know, you know, God's light shines. You know, it's the devil, the devil's got darkness in this world. He don't want us to shine. He doesn't want anybody to shine. He doesn't want anybody to hear about Jesus Christ can heal them physically and spiritually that they can go to heaven one day. The devil is going to, he's going to the pit. In Revelation 20, 10, it says, And the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's forever, you know. So the devil knows where he's going, but he doesn't want us. He doesn't want God's creation because we're created in God's image. So he hates human beings. He hates us. He wants to see us destroyed. And verse number 10, it says, And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, you know what? These people knew something had happened, something beautiful happened, and it was at the beautiful gate of uh, the temple there. You know, God healed them at the beautiful gate. God showed his power, and you know what? These people are coming to praise God, and they give God praise. You know, God's still in the miracle business today. You know, we, we know Mr. Kai, he had brain 
cancer and they operated on him and you know at first it was, you know we, we didn't know but we prayed to God and God you know what healed him now he's working he's uh, driving he's praising God you know uh, Mrs. Uh, Hawkins uh, she was on life support and you know what praise God she she got he got God took her off that and she's still you know she you know God's the miracle man God makes miracles still today we have to praise and give honor and glory and lift up the name of Jesus there's power in that name of Jesus and it says, as the lame man which was healed, he held Peter and John. These, this guy, you know what, he, he loved them, thanked them so much for God healing them. He was holding on to them. He wouldn't let them go. He says, it says he held Peter and John, you know. You know, we have, a, we, we, you know, so many people, you know, Pastor Clark, there's miracles, miracles, miracles of God. We got to keep praising God. You know, nothing's too hard for our God, you know. God can heal anything. God can do anything because in the name of Jesus, everything's possible. Amen. With men, things aren't possible. But in the name of Jesus, through God, all things are possible. And it says, as the lay man which was healed that held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. So they all ran together, these people, like, man, how did they, yo, how did this man get healed? And, you know, and then, and then it says, you know, this man held, he was hugging them, the power of God in the name of Jesus healed them, he was thankful. This man was thankful, you know. When somebody does something good, if God does something good, be thankful. Like you know, when some we get, when we get saved. Yeah, when we get saved, we gotta be thankful. You know, yeah. some people today they're unthankful, <laughs> they're ungrateful. God spares them, he does miracles for them, but they give them no praise, they give them no worship, they don't thank them, they don't give him the glory. They think they, you know, a lot of people think they did it or, yeah. you know, somebody else. I give the praise to the doctor. No, give praise to Jesus. Give praise to God. He's got all power. He gives them power to to work on you, to heal you. To, to, you know, that gives them the wisdom and knowledge. You know, we got to give God the praise. You know, some people, they just think, you know, they, you know, they did it. You know what? God did it. Okay. Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we have to tell people. And it says, when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, because he's seen all these people coming, you know, giving like, not praise, but they were coming to them. Ye men of the Israel, why ye marvel at this? He said, why you marvel? You know, if you known God, if you known God, you should know God can heal. Yeah. You know, or why look ye so earnestly on us? So they were looking at us. Why are you looking at us? We didn't do nothing. It's thought by our power or our holiness. You know what? I ain't got no power. I'm not holy. Only Jesus is holy. And him through the Holy Ghost and through me, his power can and his light can shine. It says we had made this man to walk. They didn't make this man to walk. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, this man got up. So God healed him. You know, God, God's son Jesus, you know, Jesus said, hey, uh, let's look at, oh, it says verse 13. He said he made this man to walk. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus. So God glorified Jesus, whom he delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. So here they're telling him, you know what? Abraham, God, you're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So these are the Jewish people. He's telling, this is Jesus. So let's look at John 8.58. John 8:58 John 8:58 Now we got to glorify God, you know, in the name of Jesus, it's power, his name. John 8:58 Let's let's back up a few verses. Jesus said in uh, verse 53. So here he's talking to the Jews. And in verse, go to 52. Then said the Jews unto him. So they were talking to Jews, were talking to Jesus. Now we know that thou hast a devil. So they said Jesus has a devil. Abraham instead, and the prophets, and thou saith of a man, keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. So you know what? If you keep Jesus say, if you trust him, you're never going to, you're not going to taste death. Because you know what? You're going to be with him eternally. You're going to live forever. It says, art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? So they asked Jesus, you're greater than our father Abraham? You know, he's our patriarch. And the prophets are dead. Who makest thou thy scythe? So they asked him, who are you making? Who are you saying you are? You know, and then Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. 
It is my father that honoreth me, for whom you say that he is your God. So he told them, listen, my father honoreth me, and you say that God's your, you, 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 that he's your God. Yet you have not known him. So they don't know God. They don't know because Jesus, if they would have known Jesus, they would have been worshiping him and praising him. But I know him, and if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar. So he said, if I say I don't know God, I'm a, I'd be a liar, but like unto you. But he's saying they're liars. He called them liars. Yeah. But I know him and keep his saying. He says, I know the Father. The Father's in me. I'm in the Father, and I keep his saying. And it says, your father Abraham. So they're telling him, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. So he, he's saying that he was before Abraham. Abraham saw Jesus, yeah. and he rejoiced, and he was glad to see him. Then said the Jews unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. So he was saying that he was God. He's God. He told them he was God. Then they took up stones to cast in him. But Jesus hid himself and walked out of the temple, going right through the midst of them. So he passed by. So he walked right past them. You know, here they were telling the Jews again, The God of Abraham and of Isaac, of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, he says, he, whom you delivered up and denied him in presence of Pilate. Pilate was going to let him go. He was determined to let him go. You know, Jesus said he was God. You know, God's son. Let's look at Mark 3.17. Mark 3.17. You know, they denied him. They Still they deny him. You know, a lot of people deny him. Jesus is God. Period. That's it. <laughs> 1 John 5, 7 said there's three that be reckoned in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. That's right. You know, three entities, one God. Mark 3, 17 says, no, Mark, that's not right. Um, Matthew 3, 17, I'm sorry. It's been a long week. Long week. Matthew 3.17. And it says in Matthew 3.17, we can go back to 16, and it says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending, which is the Holy Spirit, like a dove, and lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So here you have the Father, God, you have the Son, and you have the Holy Ghost, all three right here. Amen? You know, he says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. You know, Jesus said he was God. You know what? Now he says in verse... 13, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. You know, Pilate said, you know, he did nothing. He had no sin. Let's look at Luke 23, 12 through 16. Luke 23, Luke 23, 12 through 16. And it says... In Luke 23, 12, it says, In the same day, Pilate and Herod were made friends together. You know what? The wicked people come together when it's against God. That You know, they hated each other. They were at war. But the wicked come together when it's against God or God's people. The wicked will come together and make friends just to go against God's people or God. For before, they were an, en an enemy between themselves. So, you know, they were uh, they had a state, they, they had hatred toward each other. But they made friends because here... You know what? There was a cheat. And then Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, You have brought this man unto me as one that perverted the people. And behold, I have examined him before you and have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof you accuse him. So here Pilate says, I find no fault, nothing. There's no fault in this man. He has got no sin. He did nothing. And then it says, no, nor yet Herod, for I sent to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. And he said, I'll therefore chastise him and release him. So he said he would, uh, you know, punish him by a beating, but he's going to let him go. And let's go to verse 20 of 20, Luke 23, verse 20 to 24. And it says, Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. So he wanted to release Jesus. But they cried, saying, crucify him, crucify him. 
And he said unto them the third time, What hath evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them, the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. You know, so, you know, Pilate wanted to let him go. And, you know, here Paul or Peter and John were telling the Jews, you know, I was going to let him go, but he determined to let him go. But you delivered him up. And you. And then it says in verse 15, and killed the prince of, no, but you denied the Holy One and the just. Jesus was just. Jesus the Holy One. And you desired a murder to be granted. And so they wanted uh, Barnabas to be let go and killed the prince of peace who God has raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. You know what? Look at uh, Mark 15, 2 through 15. Mark 2, or Mark 15, Mark 15, you know, it's power in Jesus' name, you know what, but the people who don't let, want Jesus, they hate him no matter what, they hated him 2,000 years ago and they hate him today, Mark 15, 2 through 15, it says, and Pilate asked him, art thou the king of the Jews, and he answered, said unto him, thou sayest it, so Pilate asked, are you king of the Jews, he said, you said it, and the chief priest accused him many things, but he answering nothing. So Jesus kept his mouth quiet like a lamb to the slaughter. He didn't say anything. And Pilate asked him again, Say, answer thou nothing? Behold, how many things they witness against thee. So all these, the Jewish people said he did all these things, but he didn't do nothing. But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. So he was like, kind of like, wow, why is he not answering, you know? Now at the feast he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired, and there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection. So this guy, he caused rebellion. He caused death with him who had committed murder in the insurrection. So this man Barabbas was a murderer. And the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he, he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered him, saying, Will you that I release unto you the king of the Jews? So he said, I'm gonna release, Should I release Jesus? For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy, but the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto him. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, What evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucified him. And so Pilate, willing to be content with the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he scourged to be crucified. So you know what? They, he delivered Jesus to be crucified. You know what? The blood is on the hands of the children of Israel. And they said, his blood will be on our children's children, his blood. So you know what? They were trying to tell these people, you got to glorify Jesus. You got to glorify God. He's the one you brought in. You let a murderer go and you killed. They didn't kill him. Our sin killed Jesus. Their sin the Jews sins, the Romans sins, my sin, your sin, put it, Jesus put it on the cross. Jesus came to die for the sins of the world. Let's look at Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. You know, Jesus came to die for my sins, your sins. He paid the price. He paid. He said it is finished. He paid for the sins. And you know what? If you come to him and ask him to forgive your sins, he's just and able and willing to forgive your sins. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He's the Prince of Peace. And it says, of crease of his government, peace, there shall be no end. So you know what? There's going to be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment, and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You know what? God's, it's going to be forever. His judgment is going to be righteous. You know, you need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive your sins. Let's look at Romans 10.13 couple more verses and I'm through Romans 10 13 you know there's power in the name of Jesus 
Always lift up the name of Jesus wherever you go, no matter what. Man can't do nothing to you. You got God with you. Amen. Amen. Romans 10, 13. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So call on Jesus. Ask him to forgive your sins. Mean it straight from your heart and soul and he'll forgive you. Let's look at last verse. 1 Corinthians 6.11. 1 Corinthians 6.11. And it says, and such were some of you. So we were we were in sin, we were in darkness, but ye are washed. But now we're washed. We trusted Jesus Christ. I repented of my sins, asked him to forgive my sins, and he saved my soul. He says, but ye are sanctified. So we're sanctified through God. We're made holy through, because he's holy. I'm not holy. I'm sinful. My flesh has sinned. But one day when he comes back, he's going to give me a glorious body to go with my spirit and soul. But ye are justified. So we're justified. We're made justified. We're made holy. We're made righteous by the name, in the name of the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of our God. So through Jesus Christ, we're justified. We're made holy. We're washed in the blood. Amen. We're washed through his blood that cleanses us from all sin. So there's power in the name. You know, they denied the Holy One, the just, but... You know what? You got to come and ask Jesus Christ to forgive your sin. You know what? He died on the cross of Calvary for the sins of the entire world. And you know what? Come. You know, we, we, we have to tell people about that. It says they killed the Prince of Peace who God has raised from the dead. And we are, we are witnesses. So we got to be witnesses. We got to get out there and tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins and the sins of the whole world, Lord. I pray that we could be used, that we could glor glorify your name, show your power through us to people, Lord. Sh shine your light through us, Lord, like this man. You know, there's power in your name. There's power. It's all power. It's all powerful in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that uh, you would get the glory in this. Help us to be used to draw people to you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <laughs> all right, we're going to sing. Three forty two. Three forty two. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou mightst ransom be and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? 342, verse 2. My Father's house of light, my glory circle throne. I laugh for earthly night, for wandering sad and lone. I left, I left it all for thee, hast thou left aught for me? I left, I left it all for thee, hast thou left aught for me? I suffered much for thee, more than thy tongue can tell. A bitterest agony, and rescue thee from hell. I born, I born it all for thee, what hast thou born for me? I born, I born it all for thee, what hast thou born for me? And I have brought to thee down from my home above salvation full and free, my pardon and my love. I bring, I bring rich gifts to thee, what hast thou brought for me? I bring, I bring rich gifts to thee. What hast thou brought to me? You know, 
Jesus gave his life for us. Amen. We owe him. We owe him everything. One day he's coming back and he's going to take us with him to heaven to be with him forever. So you know what? We got to shine the light till he comes. You know, Steve Sajak in Texas, we love you. Keep praising God and serving God. And you know what? It's pretty soon it's going to be out of this world. You know, we're going to get a new body. You know, we're going to put that spirit soul with that new body. And you know, be with the Lord in heaven forever. Uh, Curtis in uh, Michigan. Uh, Marianne in Washington. And, uh, you know, all the pastors. Uh, Pastor Clark, Pastor Stiller. Pastor Zorik, uh, Pastor Thung Pui in Malaysia, uh, Pastor Thomas, Mrs. Thomas, all their wives and families. Uh, you know, we pray for everybody. You know what? Uh, let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray for all every single person who would serve in you, Lord, that you protect them, watch over them, keep us safe, and that we could be lights for you, Lord. Till you come, Lord, bless us and keep us in safety. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, in the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth, is Mount Zion on the sides and the north, the city of the great King. Well, praise God, Danny Jackal in Tennessee, Barry, Siri, Lila, have safe travel to Detroit, Esther, we got to see you back in church, Miriam, Derek, come, come. Trust Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have a good night. Praise God. Amen.